Um, most of my time actually goes in building companies, building teams, uh, hiring better people than me to like go solve these problems. So that's really my. I think this is an absolute yes in the future. In fact, we were already building this at Dark AI. Sort of. Uh, in fact, the current product already supports you. Uh, if you go to a certain hospital and if that hospital system is available in Apple Health, you can actually provide your username and password. Uh, portal, portal, patient portal login passwords and be able to pull your data onto the device. Today's uh, podcast was with Akshay Sharma, a very good friend from my college. Um, you know, he was in a computer science, information science group and um, very good academically, also enterprising, but uh, you know it's heartening to see him today lead this amazing AI healthcare initiative, um, both at Doc.ai and um, um, Human ABI, where he was one of the founding engineers. Uh, what I really liked when I, you know, I was chatting with him about this podcast, you know, what he said was he's very open to collaboration, and he said that. Uh, entrepreneurship is all about being open to uh, exposure he cares about exposure if you look at his profile uh, whether he was a doc.ai or now at sharecare and uh, you know HOD, hotg.ai where he's it's its own startup you know he's always open to exposure and learning i really like that about him when i met him in the united states it was after many years you know we studied together in uh, bangalore and uh, we were meeting after many years. He was here organizing a TEDx conference and uh, he was collaborating with the who's who in healthcare AI. There are a lot of people from top schools at Stanford, MIT, you know, Case Western, Johns Hopkins. They're all trying to disrupt this healthcare space. There are lots of uh, issues in making healthcare uh, facilities available to everyone. So the healthcare system currently is very uh, episodic. You know, if something happens, only then you know you get uh, healthcare benefits but when you are leading a normal life where your healthcare awareness is less your daily life habits are not healthy healthcare is not going to interfere so uh, it's it's a very episodic healthcare system where you pay for healthcare so uh, you know akshay was there at the tedx conference with the who's who people were thinking about how to disrupt healthcare so it can be democratized everyone can access it and uh, he says, you know, randomness and entropy, you know, in a, it's like you have to expose yourself to risk. He says risk is cheap. If, you know, most people can take risk when there's so much technology available. People can go and access information, meet people online. Risk is something everyone can take easily. What is hard is getting people skills and, you know, uh, mingling with people, putting yourself in the situation and making things happen. That's where the magic is so yeah just listen to his podcast he has amazing ideas on the future of healthcare uh, he talks about blockchain crypto tokenizing healthcare assets um, you know privacy issues of healthcare on uh, mobile and edge and a lot more i'm sure you'll enjoy this episode and i hope a lot of you will become uh, you know um, a top ai professional or a startup founder like him so let's watch the episode Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Pitch Cafe podcast. This is a place where talent meets coffee. And today our talent is going to rethink the landscape of healthcare. We all know that in the United States and many countries in the world, healthcare is not efficient. And during the pandemic, all the pain points were exposed. And what I like about our host on this show today, Akshay Sharma is he has gone into the nitty gritty of how to make healthcare digital first, decentralized, distributed, and democratized. He is one person who is building the exponential landscape through the medium of AI and data. Data and AI can be a quagmire. A lot of things are you know, not addressed. They are out in the open for people to pick up and uh, play with. And Akshay has got a very structured approach to it. And uh, he's worked with super mentors 
uh, and uh, a huge a huge contribution to the ted community as well so let's just get started no more introduction i can't wait to bring on akshay akshay welcome to pitch cafe thank you veera thank you for having me and hi listeners thanks akshay so you know let's get started uh, so akshay here you are on pitch cafe and people are excited to know about your journey so you know just a couple of sentences who is akshay sharma you know what makes him the ai leader in healthcare he is today uh, absolutely so i've been an entrepreneur engineer for the last 10 years uh, most of that entrepreneurship experience has been significantly in the in the space of healthcare and i say healthcare uh obviously i have i'm a computer science engineer and that means that applying techniques of computer science either for data understanding in healthcare or sort of you know even like collecting the data that's the first order problem and then once you collect the data what what's in the data and making sense of it and the last part is like if there is enough data can you apply certain techniques like such as artificial intelligence or deep learning to understand things that maybe human miss right so needle in a haystack problem so for the last 10 years uh, about 8 years out of the last 10 years i've been sort of in a health uh, i've been in healthcare i've been an entrepreneur building these different companies uh, most recently i was the cto of a company called docai which is based out of palo alto um and docai uh, got acquired by sharecare and the sharecare as a company has gone public uh, and i have been an executive in that company um, as uh, recently as uh, jan of uh, 2022 so that's in short what my uh, background is um, most of my time actually goes in building companies building teams uh, hiring better people than me to like go solve these problems so that's really my skill fantastic you said you uh, work with open ai is that right uh no i said i worked at human api i was the founding human engineer api. oh yeah. human api okay and we, how we, was... we did work with open ai as well as a separate thing but that's a talk yeah Okay, so what is this? Uh, I'm excited about uh, human API. What kind of uh, uh, you know value does that bring in? Is this open uh, uh, source? Is this something which users contribute by will? Uh, can you uh, talk a little bit yeah. more? Yeah. So uh, I was the founding engineer at Human API, and uh, it was a company founded by my good friend Ola and uh, Andre, and they had launched this in 2013. So back in 2013. being able to get data from devices and medical records was an impossible thing so we built these mm. api so if the best analogy i can give you is if you are using apple health which is a, a sort of out of the box solution that you have if you have an iphone in yeah. the us and you can connect different sort of uh, if you go to a certain hospital and if that hospital system is available in apple health you can actually provide your username and password a uh, portal portal patient portal login passwords and be able to pull your data onto the device right yeah. so human api built that even before apple did and we scaled it to like maybe 30000 plus hospital system in the united states to be able to wow. get like your medical data your encounter history or visit history and so on so it's not an open source solution it's obviously based on a, on it's a startup with building its own ip but the important problem that it's trying to solve is that of data liquidity meaning that there is no data available for you to even build an ai unless yeah. you are able to re- uh, lay down those platforms to be able to get the data so think of it like it's like a stripe which has all these bank integration so i can put a credit card and be able to do a financial transaction or a paypal uh, that's the analogy of what human api was trying to solve uh, in healthcare this is uh, uh, so this is the federated learning is that correct is that's what you're talking so about federated learning is an approach where um let's say we have a base model of let's say i have a model that understands given a genetic data it knows certain variants in your genes and can give you certain say uh, alerts on certain risks that you may have it's not diagnostics it's just alerts now if you think about if there are 100 people or 1000 people using this uh, sort of you know like this tool without actually like taking their genetic data onto a server if you're able to run these Uh, algorithms on the device we can actually run this on the phone your modern iphone or android can actually store like up to a terabyte of data and most of these variant files are between 500 mb 100 mb to 500 mb i'm not talking about the fully sequenced data but if you want to improve your algorithms you could use federated learning right so you're not bringing back the actual source data you're actually just running these models bringing the learned weights yeah. of the models and yeah. 
either doing certain aggregations in certain way to know whether it's it, whether, whether it's more robust or not. You're still sort of training it against the control data set that you own on a server. So you know yeah. if the model's implement. That's the idea behind federated learning. And yes, we actually built that at Doc AI. Fantastic. So it looks like the Doc AI experience is coming from very futuristic uh, healthcare uh, influencers. <clears throat> you know, I do know you, you, that Walter D. Brower is a big name. You also kept talking about Eric Topol. Can you please elaborate on how they influenced the Doc AI journey and what, what you felt, you know, interacting with them? Absolutely. That's, uh, you know, it's it's a personal, uh, I've been lucky in my life to like meet amazing people as part of this journey, um, it, which has been like both my inspiration uh, and mentorship and also sort of like, you know, my colleagues, which is like an amazing thing. So I get the trifecta of everything together. So the names that you talked about, so Doc AI was founded by Walter De Brower and Sam De Brower. So uh, they are, I would say, they have been entrepreneurs for 30 years. Uh, they have built some amazing companies uh, from Europe to uh, America. And, and in fact, Doc AI was conceived as a very personal journey for them. Uh, and I think you can put on your show notes some of the TED Talks that they've talked about. Uh, and Eric Topol was sort of our advisor uh, at, uh, at Doc AI as well. And there are other names in Doc AI because we stood on like a lot of research on, um, on the shoulder of many multiple giants, I would say. So we yeah. had deep learning expertise coming from Jeremy Howard in the early days. And then we wow. had like other researchers, Nirav Shah from Stanford is, was, was our yes. chief medical officer. So, so the, the important thing to know there is that they have always thought about like healthcare cannot be, uh, in order for us to like understand health, we need to go beyond sort of what a doctor sees in a visit when a patient comes, right? Because we hear our sensors and devices and things that are happening for you, the person, or me, the person in our real life, that's able to collect certain types of information. But the fact that we are leaving 99% of what's available for us to make a decision um, is probably not the best way to think about uh, care. I really think we, we cannot replace doctors in terms of when the care happens, but giving all the tools uh, being able to like extract information from things that humans cannot, like video data or voice data and things like that. That's where I think the future was. And this this vision was conceived in 2016. And we actually built and got it to production and even got acquired as part of that, right? So that's that's the journey. And I'm happy to go deeper if, if you're curious. Fantastic. This is so super efficient. Uh, and, you know, it may take clinical trials beyond randomized clinical trials, something to a different level. Now, uh, one of the uh, one of the questions which I had for a long time was, will the patients ever get paid to share their data? Is there something like a healthcare data market which is going to come up based on whatever information? Yeah. I mean, I think, I think this was, I'll give you my personal opinion. I think this mm -hmm. is an absolute yes in the future. In fact, we were already building this at Doc AI sort of, uh, in fact, the current product already supports. You participate in a clinical trial and you are actually getting paid for doing certain actions, right? So uh, in, in, in Doc AI, it was like we were giving you points that became Amazon gift card, but that's actually real currency in, in US at least, right? So, but the idea of like getting paid for participating is a no brainer. There are certain unnecessary restrictions in, I will quote myself here. Uh, it's, uh, I'm not qualified as a, in any which way to say that, but I really feel that participation means, uh, you know, there has to be compensation. And I think taking that one step further, I think yeah. all of us, all of us will become sort of provider of liquidity for data. And there yeah. is going to be a marketplace for data transactions. So, and that can be done in many ways. Uh, I yeah. don't imagine where sensitive, protected health information, PHI data is going to be directly sold by users to uh, interested parties. But I think letting you access that data on my device in a privacy preserving way, meaning that, hey, I'm a company, I need to like access your data, but I'll only run the compute on your phone. I don't want your data and I want to un understand certain things. That's the kind of market that will uh, mm -hmm. evolve. And these are the things around edge computing that's evolving already. Fantastic. So one, uh, you know, I want to ask you uh, your nuggets of wisdom on leadership before that. Uh, one last question ab about the, the technical aspects of healthcare. Will mm -hmm. there be a time where 
uh, the cryptocurrency market is going to drive these healthcare transactions because you know the the union budget was announced in india and mm -hmm. apparently crypto is not creating so much uh, tangible uh, wealth and transactions as much as the stock market is so they've pulled the funds out of crypto and allocated it to other uh, assets so th that is the way india is thinking the indian market is thinking but do you but the problem is organically crypto is uh, you know, taking on momentum in India. So, do you think crypto can ever drive this data market? What uh, can you tokenize your health assets at any point? Do you think that's coming? I think I think that you actually answered the question. I feel uh, so. I think tokenization of anything will happen. It it is, uh, and I have to like probably declare my bias here. I'm very definitely a believer in many of the fundamental principles of what's behind crypto. Uh, I believe tokenization of everything will happen over time. Right. Uh, the question that that is still unclear to all of us is that does it have to be a cryptocurrency as a reward system? There are certain aspects of what crypto brings to the table. Like I said, it cannot you cannot. It's not a database in a company, a database in a company. Sure. You know, like people claim that it's secure, but it's always under somebody else's control. We've seen this again and again where, you know, like companies get sold and they shut down services. Right. So all your access is gone. Crypto uh, crypto basically guarantees that there is certain level of no control by any central authority. Now, that's a journey for crypto itself to get there. But the fact that that if that layer exists in the future and those are being worked by the crypto community, then tokenizing something like healthcare is is going to happen. In fact, there are uh, ideas like Mina protocol, which I think is a great um, uh, cryptocurrency. That's uh, like it's a basically a la la layer one chain that's being built. And what they allow you to do is private computations on. Mm. I don't know. I don't know if they support devices yet, but you can do private con computations on on a device, right? So at that point, you can actually license your data on your device, for example, and wow. then get rewarded in that. And they guarantees all the you know the all the foolproof. Uh, features that that's needed for you know like making sure that there is no tampering with the data and things like that. So for me, I would take that ten year bet uh, without like a hesitation. Fantastic. So okay, Akshay, last question. What are some of the uh, you know top three leadership lessons you have learned, which you want to tell the first time founders, the youth who hmm. are sitting in college and imagining one day they want to start their own company? What are the top three leadership lessons? Before I let you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the first one I would say is, uh, look, uh, you can be incredibly smart and good. And I have worked with many, many smart people, uh, luckily being in the Valley. And I think it's ev uh, everywhere in the world. You will realize quickly that there is a local maxima for you to like achieve your potential if you don't learn people skills. The most important thing to get leverage in life is to understand how to collaborate with others. And at some point after post collaboration, it actually becomes about giving giving sort of like ability for people to like, you know, succeed. So some of the things that what that means is you have to constantly keep relearning yourself every few years. You have to like let go of notions that you've like built yourself over time and be able to like have that learning mindset all the time and the growth mindset all the time. So some key lessons I would say are, look, I think it's important to like build trust, build culture first, like the problems that you're working on will always evolve, but always build the trust with the team so that they have safety nets to take the risks, right? So people, you want people to take more risk because risk is cheap nowadays, dollar and risk have become cheap. <laughs> take risks, but give them the safety net to do that. So that's the most important thing that I, I can I can share with everyone. Oh, amazing, really cool advice. It's like a, a power packed one bullet of advice you gave. So great, Akshay, thank you. thank you so much for your most valuable, I don't know, 20, 25 minutes. Uh, uh, you distilled a, a decade of uh, you know, experience in that only you can do it. <laughs> so, I, I hope not. <laughs> yeah, so there are many more people doing these things. Yeah. So, all right. So great. Uh, so actually, I would love to have you back again, and I'll certainly keep track of your uh, cutting edge work in healthcare AI. And to all you listeners, uh, please uh, look out for Akshay Sharma. He's uh, uh, doing his own startup. What's a good way to reach you, Akshay? If anyone has questions or they want so to, so I'm on Twitter. You. I'm on LinkedIn. So look me up as uh, I don't know the URLs. So we can put that there. But also, like, look at my new company called HOTG.AI. You can find me there as well. Fantastic. Uh, with that, we'll uh, call the session to a close and you all have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you.